Good morning. So yesterday it was a beautiful sunny and windy day and we made the first video showing the three mares. Cole sisters, 13 and a half years old, all, all spent their entire life the exact same management on this farm. Same rations, same amount of mud, same amount of work. So we're testing the theory that this uh, CPL disease, chronic progressive lymphedema, um, they have a theory out in Europe that it's 70% management, only 30% genetic. Um, Dr. Karen Gruner has spoke on this before. For those of you interested in more information, we can we can put that out or you can personal message me. But we have the three mares shampooed and clipped and we'd like to look at their legs. It's the ABA's experience after doing hundreds of horses all over this continent that the horses with the biggest bone, the most feathers, and the coarsest feathers seem to have the most symptoms of CPL. What are the symptoms of CPL? Skin folds, usually on the back of the legs, but sometimes so severe that they wrap around to the front of the cannon bone and nodules and that's just the beginning symptoms after the skin continues to break down you can have things like exudates in other words seepage and weepage you can have maggots you can have hyperkeratosis and flaking of the skin you have an extreme edema and swelling it is all from the the lymphatic system plugging and the legs not not being able to expel fluid it gets so bad that the fetlocks will detach and become loose um, the horse will have increased discomfort. It'll take increased management just to keep the horse alive in any kind of comfort. So we have the three sisters, all 50% European, all Belgian mares, a more modern American Belgian mare. Hannah and Holly had old style American Belgian mares, meaning old thicker leg red roans. Um, basically what they're trying to the American Bourbon Association is trying to reproduce with the American Bourbon horse. We shampooed and shaved them yesterday and let's look at our results. Remember Holly here, is the most like a European. Um, she's most like her 100% European father. She's got a great mind, very calm, very not reactive. She's our breaking mare. But she had the thickest cannon bones, the most feathers, and the coarsest feathers. She's 13 and a half years old, and unfortunately, and it breaks my heart, you can see the amount of nodules. I mean, she was hell on the clippers. We were had dry skin. These are nodules. They feel like a half a grape or a half a half an egg corn under the skin. Grandma, can you just take her towards the hay a little bit at a 45 degree angle? As you come around back, these are the skin folds. Her skin folds are almost too numerous to count. She probably has somewhere between 10 and 13 of them. They are sensitive. Her fetlock is starting to loosen in the fronts. Some of the skin folds under the fetlock are huge. There's nodules all along the sides. Both front legs, her nodules are almost too numerous to count. Why don't we turn all three horses around quick and I'll show you all the in the rear. You see the prodigious hair growth. I mean, these horses. The ones with the most hair and the coarsest hair. Here's the skin folds. A little bit dirty this morning. The back legs even have nodules. Holly has some massive skin folds under the fetlock. I mean, that's not a second fetlock. That's a skin fold that size. Her fetlocks are starting to detach. Um, just not a good situation. You can see the edema already starting. When you press it, it comes back. So there is what I would consider our most European horse. She's the thickest, thickest can of bones. We have Hannah. She had the middle measurement, if you guys remember yesterday. She has some skin folds, definitely more than she had a few years ago, so it is starting to progress. This is not edema, that is bone, but her fetlocks are starting to loosen. She has a heck of a skin fold here that's even starting to get chapped. She has some hyperkeratosis. We see the skin flaking. This stuff has been diagnosed for years as greasy heel, pasture dermatitis, scratches. Some of that's not, not wrong, but a lot of times they are just secondary issues to the, to the CPL, expanding the leg, ruining the skin, and then other skin conditions come on. It's still important to manage. Keep your horse thin, keep it out of mud, keep the feathers clipped, keep them dry, treat for mites but one has to ask you got to ask yourself if the first thing you do for management is clip the feathers off and keep them clipped off and keep the horse dry 
why are we breeding more feathers on the horse? Why are we not cleaning? Why are we not breeding a clean legged horse like they had 120 years ago, 140 years ago? It's almost like the farmers already knew what they were doing back then and the breeders already knew what they were doing back then for a healthy horse that had to stand in a stable and had to stand in a manger and be worked six days a week. Front. Hannah has one front leg that's quite good. One front leg that's not so good. She's got more nodules around the front too. If that's manure if that's actual exudate. I don't know. It was clean yesterday and shampooed. So one front leg's not as good, one front leg's better. Finally we have Eve, another 50%, but out of a thinner legged, cleaner legged mare. No skin folds. I know she does when she stands square. Oh, you. Yep, she has one started here. But she has a little bit of a sore even. You'll see a lot of these stripes. Those are clipper. That's me not doing a great job clipping. You see it on, I don't know how much we'll pick up on the film. Hannah, looks like I did a worse job on Hannah clipping. There's more. That's not anything except Jason doing a bad job clipping. And towards the end of the day, after Holly's legs, the clippers were half dull. So Leave has just a start of a skin fold. No nodules, no sores, no open lesions. Her front legs are almost perfect. Evie. She has a skin fold started under there. Yeah, she wants to show everybody she's a good horse. Pick up her foot for us. Almost no skin folds. You can come around the front, Katrina. Legs are clean of nodules. No swelling. Now, this is just a small case, a controlled... We'll come back out here for the lights better. This is just one case that we could demonstrate of three sisters that had the same management, the same age, very closely genetic, on how the genes presented themselves, the difference. The reason we chose this experiment is we've seen this over and over and over and over again throughout the continent. Drier climates out west seem to be a little better because the horses are naturally in less mud and drier. But over and over again we've seen the thicker legged horses, the more the feathers, the coarser the feathers, the more advanced and the more aggressive the CPL. We don't know why that phenotype of horse is more predisposed to struggle with this disease. This horse here has ample bone. Compared to many American Belgians, they consider that very heavy bone. That horse has been in tremendous pulls in her life and no lameness issues. So really, there is no reason to go either direction, either the American Belgian or too heavy in Europe. There's no reason to go to either extreme. We feel that a middle of the road horse is the healthiest horse and it just so happens that it mimics the horse from 100 years ago. We'll be putting out more films about stallion selection and mating. Um, if you had a stallion that looked like Holly with the great mind, that might not be the worst choice. I would like the legs to be a little better than that, but that might not be the worst choice if you're just starting your program and you're standing around with six or eight either hitchy bred or pulling bred American Belgian mares with very clean legs. You might want to add a lot of brains, calm them down and, and thicken the bone up some. But if you have clean mares, you obviously would not select a stud like that. You know, if you had clean 50% mares, you would not want to go backwards with the legs. Um, we'll put out more films on that. We'll show you a 13 and a half year old stallion, shampooed and clipped. We'll also show you an 84% European Belgian mare. Um, she's all Belgian, but 84% recent European and 16% American Belgian. So I hope some of you, this clears something up, shows you a controlled experiment. I hope those with an open mind can see that you can manage, but it's not all about management. It is about the phenotype of horse and how the genes present themselves, and you can only manage from there. Um, look for more films. Thank you for watching.